woman charged for causing death of a police officer. Police issued wanting bulletin for the third suspect in North Sapphire raid. In the region, protests in Colombia continues and internationally, China fires back after U.S. legislation supporting Hong Kong. <music> Greetings and welcome to this edition of Headline News Update. I am Baby Bacchus. Thank you for joining us. The disgraced movie town security guard shown in a viral video shooting a shotgun has been arrested and charged. 23-year-old Mario Embrach of Lot 88 South, Vizalos East Coast de Marara, was arrested and charged on the 28th of November with discharging a loaded firearm in a public place on the 8th of November at movie town Liliandal East Coast de Marara. The defendant appeared at the Spirendam Magistrates Court No. 2 on the 28th of November before Her Worship Miss George. He pleaded guilty to the charge and was fined 15,000 Guyana dollars or three months imprisonment. The Guyana Police Force has issued a wanted bulletin for the third suspect in connection to a raid this week in North Sophia. Here's more from George Gonzalez. The Guyana Police Force has issued a wanted bulletin for 27-year-old Steve Richard Backus of E North Sophia and of Lot 71 2019. That operation carried out by the force resulted in the arrest of a construction worker and his common-law wife. The raid uncovered two unlicensed firearms, several rounds of ammunition, and 32 kilograms of cannabis. According to the police bulletin, Bacchus is wanted by the police for questioning in relation to possession of a firearm, ammunition, and narcotics. Anyone with information that may lead to the arrest of 27-year-old Steve Richard Bacchus is asked to contact the police on telephone numbers 226-6978-225-6978. Nine one one, or your nearest police station. All information will be treated with the strictest confidence. Channel 2 Headline News, George Gonzalez. Thanks, George. Early Monday morning, an auto accident claimed the life of a police officer. The surviving driver in this case was charged today. As the Sobers has more in this report. This morning to 1 o'clock of Norton Street, Georgetown, faced the Georgetown Magistrate Court accused of causing death of a police officer. The court heard that on 25th of November 2019 at Brigdam and Commerce Place, she drove her motor car in a manner dangerous to the public, causing the death of Corporal Carl Roach. The prosecutor further told the court that Clark turned south without stopping and collided with the motorcycle CH 9436. Roach was thrown 150 feet from the point of impact and received multiple serious injuries. Roach died on the scene. The prosecution had initially objected for a bill granted to Clark, citing the nature of the offense. Clark was released on $700,000 bail. As a condition of her release, she will have to report to the Albertown Police Station every Friday. Clark will face the courts again on December 16, 2019. For Channel 2 Headline News, Esther Sobers. Thanks, Esther. DUN Democracy Fund's annual call for project proposals is open until the 22nd of December 2019. DUN Democracy Fund supports two-year projects that empower civil society, promote human rights, and encourage the participation of all groups in democratic processes. The large majority of the UNDEF funds go to local civil society organizations. The UNDEF provides grants of up to $300,000 per project. UNDEF invites project proposals covering one or more of eight main areas, gender equality, community activism, rule of law and human rights, youth engagement, strengthening civil society interactions with government, media and freedom of information, tools for knowledge, and electoral processes. In this round, UNDEF particularly welcomes projects on media and freedom of information. Project proposals may be submitted online in English or French at www.un.org slash democracy fund. Coming up after the break, your regional and international news.
Friday sale on Friday, November 29th. Every item in the store is reduced up to half off and up to 70% off ladies' dresses. Get ladies' tops, jeans, shoes, and skirts. All at half off. Gents' shirts, jeans, jerseys, shoes, sneakers, slippers, all at half off. Only pay that. Get brands like Levi's, Dockers, and Gen Suits at 15% off. Remember, it's Clearance Mega Black Friday sale. Friday, November 29th. Clearance, always keeping you in style. Welcome to Kasum's Furniture. Find everything you need for your home and more under one roof in our newly decorated showroom. Our locally crafted furniture has been perfected over the last 60 years. From our hands to your home, we also bring to you our newly introduced lines of imported furniture and sleep center, where you can find a wide range of beds and mattresses. Kisun's Furniture, furnishing homes for over 60 years. It's bigger, it's better, it's back! It's GTT's plus size Christmas promotion! Connect with your friends and loved ones with GTT services to benefit from our biggest ever Christmas bundle of specials and be one of our plus size winners. Visit our website or call 227-9444 for more information today. Big bundles for you. Big bundles for you. Top up a granny, make a winner out of you. We got a game show for you. Game show for you. Presents everything Christmas village. village. Rudolph will be on the show. Dancing and singing. There's a gift in Santa's village for all ages of children. <laughs> Come, let's play some jolly games and have fun. So much prizes to be won. Yeah. Join us at Everything Christmas Village at the Merry Moms Mall Playground on November the 30th and December the 1st and continues every weekend until December the 22nd. This village will have games, prizes, boots, business displays, Santa's Village, Rudolph the Grinch, Olaf, and Elsa will be there too. Plus, you can win a trip to Curacao, Cartro Falls, and much more prizes. Remember, free entry with a purchase of a raffle ticket. Get your tickets at Precise Printed on South Road, Bunny's Meat Center on Church Street, and Merry Moms Mall Playground. Sponsored by Eldorado Tours, Ansema Cars, Sterling Products, Rubis, Star Party Rentals, Bunny Meat Center, and more. It's one week of Black Friday deals at Quartz. From November 26th to 29th, you get huge savings on selected items in store. Benefit from our Black Friday deals by checking press for details. You do not want to miss this opportunity to get the best prices of the year. The Quartz Black Friday event starts now with unbelievable savings. Black Friday deals are from November 26th to 29th. Remember, check press for details. Quartz, bringing value home. Oh, oh. Shop at John Lewis Styles in December and you could win one Amazon tablet or smartwatch every day. And that's not all. Four persons will win one million dollars to spend in the store. Just imagine one million dollars to spend on clothing, footwear, watches, fragrances, handbags, luggage, and accessories. Enter to win with every five thousand dollars you spend. So shop now to win one tablet or smartwatch every day and one million dollars to spend in the store. John Lewis Styles. Styles, simply different. Welcome back. In the region, thousands of Colombians, angered by the killing of a teenager, have protested for the seventh day against the government, demanding economic reforms and an end to corruption. Al Jazeera, Alexandro Rampati reports. When Colombian unions and student groups called for a national strike on November 21st, few imagined it would have sparked an unprecedented movement. The marches that day were the biggest in decades. At night, spontaneous demonstrations broke out in rich as well as poor neighborhoods and have continued now for a week unabated. This generation woke up. Colombia is finally awake and is demanding to be heard. The time has come to find solutions to our social problems. We are not afraid anymore to speak up and show ourselves to the world. Despite being one of the most unequal countries in the world, Colombians have seldom brought their grievances to the street. Decades of civil conflict with rebel groups and paramilitaries, violent drug cartels and killings of political and union leaders had silenced social malaise. 
but the signing of the peace deal three years ago that disarmed FARC rebels seems to have also opened the door to long neglected demands. Armed conflicts tend to put a damper on other uh, less immediate concerns than one's life. And the end of the formal end of the conflict has led, at least in the large cities of Colombia, to other types of grievances appearing related to education, health, pensions, inequality, corruption, violence, etc. Colombian president's response has mostly been to discredit and criminalize the demonstrations while playing lip service to their constitutional right to protest. We are living moments of great demand in society, but let's be clear, the arsonists will not win with violence. What they did will not help them at the polls. In recent days, riot police have used tear gas and stun grenades to disperse the mostly peaceful crowds. One teenager died after being hit by a gas canister. Yet rallies continued. Though the protests here haven't reached the kind of fevered frenzy that we've seen in Chile, Bolivia or Ecuador in past months, it's clear that Colombia has entered a new phase of political and social demands that many believe is here to stay. I think Colombia is going through a political transition where the peace deal, the international contest and the new generation are all playing a role. What we don't know yet is where we're going with it. While it's unclear what they will achieve, these protesters believe the time has come to confront many political challenges that have been postponed for way too long. Alessandra Ampietti, Al Jazeera, Bogotá. And internationally, China has accused the United States President Donald Trump of sinister intentions after the president signed a Hong Kong human rights bill. Al Jazeera reports. China's foreign ministry on Thursday threatened unspecified, firm consequences after U.S. President Donald Trump signed two new bills supporting pro-democracy protesters in Hong Kong. The legislation had drawn rare bipartisan support in the U.S. Congress, passing nearly unanimously in the House and Senate. They threatened sanctions for officials implicated in human rights abuses and banned the export of crowd control munitions to the Hong Kong police. But most importantly, the State Department must now regularly certify that Hong Kong retains sufficient autonomy from Beijing to justify the territory's favored trading status with the U.S. Rescinding that status, which allows for much freer trade than with mainland China, could have major fallout. U.S.-Hong Kong trade hit over $67 billion in 2018, with the U.S. running a nearly $34 billion trade surplus. Over 1,300 U.S. companies, including all major financial firms, operate in the dominant Asian financial hub. The latest tension is likely to complicate ongoing negotiations over phase one of an agreement to end the punishing 16-month U.S.-China trade war. China has accused the U.S. of being the biggest black hand behind the recent unrest in Hong Kong, while also trying to leave the conflict there out of trade negotiations. Trump, for his part, has tried to walk a line between Beijing and protesters, saying he signed the bills in the hope that the two sides will settle their differences with peace and prosperity for all. Here now is your 3 d weather forecast.
that is all for this edition of Channel 2 Headline News Update. Tune in on Friday at 6 p.m. for another episode. Be sure to subscribe, like, and follow us on Facebook and YouTube, or you can visit our website at headlinenewsguyana.com for more news. Until then, take care. Thank you.